Jonathan. We're here in the studio. We promised yep. everyone some gear, uh, some gear updates. So what are we working with? Well, we got a Nash Nardone from Civilian hooked it up, and he works for Battlefield and plays with a bunch of other people too. But um, hooked, it, hooked it up with this Battlefield kit. It's all maple. It's a twenty-two by twenty, a ten by eight, and we had a or excuse me, a 12 by 8 We had a 10 by 8 but we found this uh, Sonar, what is that, just a 4 Series, uh, which is a midline kit, but it sounds really good, so we kept that one. And then the Battlefield 16x16, 16 16, which is a beast with a nice Yamaha sub kick on the bottom, <laughs> which that is the way to do it. Um, the snare I'm using is a Gretsch um, Rosewood 14 by eight. Man, I wish you guys could see the color on this. This thing here, let's just do, I'm not gonna mess any mics up. Let's just do that. Jeez. Is that, is that good? Yeah. But this thing is a beauty. And they actually, Gretsch is doing a lot with their Catalina series and the Renown series. They spray the inside with a, a silver stain or I forget exactly what it is, but it gives it a little more crack and almost like a stainless shield, steel shell, even though it's wood on the outside. So that's pretty cool. Mm. Um, symbols, got a, uh, <laughs> Byzance Minel 22 Medium Crash, it's actually a crash symbol, but I love to ride it, beat the heck out of it. This is a Byzance, uh, Dark 18 that was actually here at the studio that I am definitely loving. Um, it's real quick, but it's trashy, so I like it. This is the brainchild of experimentation <laughs> in the studio. This is actually, okay, K Custom Dry Light Ride with two rivets on top. On bottom is a 20 inch uh, Byzance Medium. It's actually the 20 inch version of the ride. Cool. Um, on the bottom, it's cracked. Did that on purpose. Um, not really. <laughs> and uh, yeah, that's about it. As far as John Thomas Price um, is in town from uh, LA. And he produced our first two records and is here in Tampa helping us on this record as well. So what are we doing, Mike Weiss? All right. For overheads, we're, 57s. Uh, <laughs> uh, we're doing uh, three overhead mics, two stereo. They're Peluso P12s. Awesome mics. Ridiculously awesome mics. For a center overhead, we're using the Wonder Audio uh, U47. So it's basically like a, like their version of a Neumann U47? It's the most bomb mic made, pretty much. Nice. It's awesome. Um, yeah, it's, it's like the, it's a remake of the Vintage, and they do, they do the best remakes of, um, of about everything. So that's Wonder Audio? Mm-hmm. Wonder Audio. SM. Sure, SM7? SM7 for the giant hi-hats. Presence boost on it. Um, using 421, uh, 421s for the Tom mics. Makes those Sennheiser? Yeah. Sennheiser 421s um, on the Toms. And then Jonathan pointed out on the bottom of the floor Tom, we got a Yamaha sub kick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which some of you noticed on an Instagram picture and... Inside the kick, we have a uh, uh, D12. The original D12. The original D12 AKG. And on the outside, we're using a Lawson uh, FET 47, uh, which is an incredible mic. It kind of captures some of the a little more sub frequencies and stuff like that coming off the, the front of that head that cool. it's going to produce. Sweet. And then uh, we got a couple room mics going too. Yeah, we're behind these baffles. So you got the drums here and then these two baffles on either side. What mics are we got running here? We're running the <coughs> Neumann, uh, I think it was in Newland, right? Yeah, the Neumann uh, uh, 87s for both of our room mics. Putting them on the baffles kind of gives it, picks up a little more drums and less yeah. direct. Um, symbols instead of more of the symbols. And then we got a 
super awesome mic in here also. So this is the hallway leading out of the live room to the this is to the, the control room. You can hear they got it real loud in the control room. This is a um, uh, Neumann um, U67, which is awesome, really old vintage mic, very warm, very cool. Uh, and we're getting very warm, very cool. <laughs> <That's a> little... <laughs> very neat, maybe. Uh, so we're putting this in the hallway, and um, it's gonna just a unique room sound from the drums. Yeah. We keep this door cracked by about a foot for some reason. That sounds better than wide open, or yeah, in any other position. But cool. Yeah. Um. Maybe we'll walk through some of the preamps? Yeah. All right, so we're in the control room, and we're going to run through some of the EQs and preamps and stuff we're using on the drums. In and out mics. We're hitting the uh, API, the 3124, um, for the kick in and out. Um, uh, we're also using it for the snare top and the floor tom. Uh, for the kick in, uh, we're then sending it back over to the SSL. Um, Which is this board over here? Yes. SSL eight thousand G plus. Uh, using the the E EQ for uh, for the kick, not EQ in the outside mic tracking. Um, uh, mostly SSL EQ for drums. Mm -hmm. uh, just kind of prefer that punch that it kind of gives. Um, overheads we're using the ten seventy threes. Neve. Those are Neve. Yep. Using uh, those for the overheads and for the uh, center room and the uh, one of the overhead mics, we're using the Calrec down here. And these are pretty cool preamp and EQs. A little, they have a little color to them. And so um, for the room mics, it, it's kind of cool to do that, you know. That's a little character, Tim. Yeah. Everything drum wise is running through the tape machine, which is pretty exciting for us. One of the main reasons we chose this studio is the ability to track to tape, um, kind of blended with new technology, new digital technology, which is awesome. So basically, all of the instruments come through the amp or through the uh, board and EQ and and preamps and stuff that John Thomas talked about. Then they come to the tape machine, and we actually are tracking to tape, and then it runs through a digital conversion system that sends it to um, Pro Tools, and then instantly erases it and loops back around. So we're actually running unlimited tape. Um, so that, that nice, warm, analog tape sound that, that everyone fell in love with from like all the records you grew up on, we're actually going to be able to capture that sound too, with um, cap coupled with the ability to one use unlimited tape and then be able to multi-track and go back and edit and do all that kind of good stuff. So it's a pretty cool system. If any of you nerds out there want to read up on it, it's called Clasp, C L A S P, Clasped Closed Loop Analog Signal Processor. So you can look that up and. Yeah, that's yeah. it for all you drum nerds.